I would, yeah, because uh, we have people from various fields, so I will share my own experiences, maybe this round and then in the next round, maybe certain policy level interventions. Uh, but uh, I, uh, what Sir has said, true, we are moving towards self-reliant India, uh, but uh, as somebody in the field, what has been my impression, at least uh, in the last couple of years, at least since we got hit by the pandemic, has been that uh, we are, uh, you know, there are a lot of things happening in by leaps and bounds that are taking us forward. And uh, I feel that, uh, see, in general, the thinking is that by 2047, we should achieve Atma Nirbharta in a number of areas. And I feel that even before that, we will be able to achieve our goal uh, towards becoming self-reliant. This is what is uh, my perspective. This is what I have seen happening in the field. At least in Assam, I can uh, talk about my own state. And I have seen the examples of my colleagues in other states also. Uh, Professor Sandeep's example actually, when I came here and I was reading the topic, this is what also came to my mind and I have to, you know, thank him and congratulate him for the great work that they have done with this tech uh, innovation. And if he had not brought up this example, I would have brought it up because when I first joined the district, I think about a couple of months later, I was uh, looking for our uh, UDOP, one district, one product, and that is when I came to know about Professor Sandeep's work. And uh, I was truly impressed with the minimal amount of resources, with the very, you know, the number of constraints that we face in a district like Kograjhar, in, uh, in uh, you know, Boroland University, which is still, uh, you know, upcoming in a number of ways. So the kind of effort they have put in. So, uh, what the, the takeaway for me has been that if our human resources are good, then definitely India as a nation can become self-reliant. All of us have heard about the demographic dividend. India is one of the youngest nations of the country. Uh, I think our median age is only about 27, so we are younger than a number of other nations. And if we as a nation are able to capitalize on this, if we are able to give our manpower, our youth, the training in skilling, in skilling, reskilling, upskilling, in always keeping ourselves relevant in various areas, then definitely as a nation, we can become self-reliant. And uh, with programs like, uh, you know, Koshal Vikas Yojana, in the state level also, we have skill development, placement link program. If all of these programs uh, happen in a big way, then our movement towards self-reliance is assured. Uh, Professor Sandeep has talked about the COVID example and I would like to carry it forward. I would like to share some of our experiences when I was the uh, Deputy Commissioner in uh, Gwalpara district of Assam. The lockdown happened on 24th of March 2020 and at that point in time, um, as Professor Sandeep has talked about, uh, you know, sanitizer was something that maybe two, three people in the district only knew about. When I used to carry a sanitizer bottle with me and people would say, Ki, kya hai? you know, pre-COVID. So we didn't have sanitizers, we didn't have masks, we didn't have hairnet, and on top of it, the kind of fear that COVID had provoked. People were really scared, like everybody was scared. When one went out of the house in the morning, one didn't know that whether they will come back alive. There were all those videos, I think a number of you also must have seen, ki China may, they, they claimed that it was a COVID patient, the person just fell down and dropped dead, and so many scary videos. So that, it was our COVID lesson. Honorable Prime Minister has said that the main lesson to be learned from COVID for India is that we have to become Atma Nirbhar, we have to become self-reliant. And I have seen that story happening. I have seen how it has happened and how India has responded, at least at the field level as a unit. So when COVID started, when we heard about COVID, say in 2019, December, we heard the stories, but that time they were not very scared. January when by February I think the cases started coming to Delhi and March May our we got the first cases from the returnees of the Tablighi Jama in Golpara and we were told that we will have to take care of those patients in Golpara itself because obviously every district had to take care and our doctors were scared our nurses they knew nobody knew anything but from that model how step by step did we develop a model that we could take care of very critical COVID patients what what is all this this is all self reliance. Earlier, even a Thota case, we would have to refer to Bohati for Pekka. But COVID times, our doctors treated the most critical of COVID patients, requiring oxygen, 
requiring you know ICU care and so on. Uh, then uh, COVID first happened, we didn't have uh, hospital sufficient beds, we didn't have sufficient beds, we didn't have mattresses, resources were limited. And uh, even though full uh, state government gave full support, uh, overall there was a lack of uh, things, you know, like hospital mattresses, where does one get from, oxygen cylinders, where do you get oxygen from. So how did we go about fulfilling these needs? This, this is the lesson that as an administrator I have learned and this is the lesson that India has learned that if we can, um, you know, if we can respond in terms of uh, such critical times of need when we have been able to respond then there is no reason that we will not become self-reliant and uh, there are a number of other examples maybe I can take up a little more in the next round but uh, we are all time bound so I will end with this right now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Helen. Thank you so much. So, responding on the right.